What is up you guys? Today I want to show you how you can use Tailwind CSS to add dark mode to your React applications because let's be honest, websites without dark mode nowadays just kind of suck. So I want to show you how you can do this so that you can take your next project to the next level. Tailwind CSS is honestly one of my favorite technologies that I have ever come across in the web development space and adding dark mode with it is not as complicated as you might think. So let's get into it. All right, so what we have here is a brand new boilerplate Next.js application on the left that I created using Create Next app. And then on the right here, I am running the application in the browser. Um, and I have already set up and configured Tailwind to work with Next.js as per, as per this documentation here. I will link this in the description below. It essentially just goes through a bunch of simple steps to create a brand new Next app and set up Tailwind within that app. So we are going to pick up as if you have already installed and configured Tailwind with your Next.js project. Okay, so we are going to start off by just removing all of the boilerplate code that comes with the out of the box create next app. Uh, we're gonna start off with this index page here. So I'm just going to remove all of this HTML and just replace it with a div that says hello. And then we're going to go into our globals CSS file and we're going to remove absolutely everything inside of this file except for these three lines here. These three lines did not come out of the box with Next.js. I added them in here myself manually uh, as it is one of the steps inside of this documentation here with setting up Tailwind with Next.js. So if you follow these steps or if you have already previously to watching this video, uh, you will have these in this file here. So we're going to remove everything except for those three lines. So now if we go back to our application, we should not have any out of the box Next.js styles. We just have this bare bones project. So we can see here that our application has turned to light mode. That's sort of the default browser behavior. So let's talk about how we can actually enable dark mode now in our application using Tailwind. So if you just search up for the dark mode documentation on the Tailwind website, you will come across this page here. And we are going to be discussing the section that talks about toggling the dark mode manually, because that is what we want to do. We want to be able to switch back and forth between dark mode and light mode manually with some sort of button. So in order to use dark mode styles in our application, we need to add the class dark to our HTML body. And once the dark class is present on our HTML body, we can create styles and prefix them with this dark colon string, as you can see here. And then those styles will be applied when the dark class is present. And so essentially when we're toggling the theme from light and dark, the idea is to add and remove this dark class from the HTML body. Now, in order to do this in a React application, we can create a couple of custom hooks that are going to allow us to add and remove this dark class to the HTML body. All right, so let's create a folder called hooks. And the first one we're going to create is going to be called use local storage. So let's create that file here. Now I'm using TypeScript, so my files end in TSX, but this should work with JavaScript as well. So for those of you that don't know what local storage is, if I go to the developer tools in the browser here, um, and I go to the application tab, there is a section called local storage, and we can essentially store whatever data we want in local storage here. So you can see here that I previously have another application that um, is storing a color theme in here. So what I'm going to do is clear out the local storage, and then we're going to build this hook that is going to interact with our browser's local storage so that we can know what that value is. So something really cool I did to write this hook actually was I went and I used chat GPT to write me this hook. Uh, I essentially went to chatgpt.com. I, uh, I actually typed in, please write me a custom React hook for using local storage. And it was like, certainly, and it wrote me this perfectly fine hook that does exactly what we need to do. And I will link the repository for this tutorial in the description. So this code will be available for you to paste into your application. So I'm gonna copy that code and paste that in here. And I'm just going to type these so that TypeScript is happy. Again, if you're using JavaScript, don't worry about that. It's not super important. So what this hook does is it communicates with our browser's local storage via this window.local storage object here and it allows us to store and read data to and from the browser's local storage. So we can use this hook to store anything we want in the browser's local storage. In this case, it's going to be the color mode, but you could use it to store any other data that you want. So when we're using this hook, all we need to do is pass in the key for the data that we're interested in inside of our local storage, which in our case is going to be color mode, 
and the hook is going to return to us the stored value at that key, as well as the set stored value function that is going to allow us to modify that value. So when we have some sort of button that says like toggle color mode, when we click on that, it's going to call this set stored value function and it's going to update that value in our local storage. So that is how this hook works essentially. Um, now let's create another hook called use color mode. And this hook is going to be responsible for actually communicating with this use local storage hook. And this is going to give us the actual color mode, whether it's light or dark. So let's write out this hook together. So this is going to be a function called use color mode. And inside of here, we are going to call our use local storage hook. And as we just said before, the use local storage hook is going to return to us some stored value for a key that we provide, as well as the function to modify that stored value. So the name we're going to give that variable is going to be color mode and the set function we're going to call set color mode. Now use local storage is mad because we are not passing in a key. As I mentioned, we have to pass in a key and tell it what value we want from local storage. So that key in this case is going to be called color mode and we just need to pass in an initial value for the first time we call this hook and the initial value we're going to give our color mode is going to be light. Now what we're going to do is create a use effect and inside of the dependency array here, I am going to add the color mode variable. Whenever we toggle the color mode between light and dark, we need to either add or remove the dark class from the HTML body. So that's why we're creating this use effect because we need some sort of logic to happen every time the color mode value changes. We can create a variable called class name, and this is going to be dark. And then what I'm going to do is create a variable called body classes. And this is going to represent all of the current classes on the HTML body. So we can say window.document.body.classlist. And so now we either want to add or remove this class name from this body classes list. Well, if the updated color mode is dark, we want to add the class name dark. And if the updated color mode is light, we want to remove the class name dark. So it's one of two things that we want to do. So we can use a ternary operator here and we can say, is the color mode equal to dark? If it is, then we want to add the class name dark to our body classes. And if it's not, meaning that it's light, we want to remove the dark class. Perfect, and this is supposed to be a colon. There we go. And that is all we need to put inside of here. And from this hook, we are going to return the color mode and the set color mode function. And then at the very bottom here, we just want to export default our use color mode hook. Okay, so that's it for our two hooks. And so now we are ready to actually go to our React components and call our use color mode hook and see this in action. So let's close these two files here and come to our index page here. Now, in order for the dark class to actually do something in our application, we need to add something to our Tailwind configuration file here. Um, and that's specified in the documentation here. We just need to tell Tailwind that we are going to be adding dark mode via the class. So we can just add this line here to our config. So we can just say dark mode class, and we may need to recompile the application after doing that. So now just to show you how this works, let's go back to our app and let's come to our document file here and let's add the class name dark. Okay, so nothing happened there. But if I come to our index page here again and I create some sort of utility class prefix with the dark class, you can see that it should be applied. So if I say dark BG red 600, um, you can see that that is being applied because we are currently in dark mode. And so to see that this class is actually applied to our HTML body, you can come to the um, elements tab here in the developer tools. And if you look at the body, you can see that it's there because we just added it in the code. So now all we need to do is use our use color mode hook to add and remove this class from our body. Now let's make this div span the entire screen. So we're gonna say height screen and width screen so that it's very large and visible and that's kind of tough on the eyes here. So let's change this up. We're just gonna make, if, if it's dark, we're just gonna make the background of this black. Um, and if it's light, we'll make it white. So now inside of this div, let's create a button that is actually going to toggle this dark mode, light mode theme. So let's just make this button say toggle theme. But let's make the background of this button red 500. And if it's dark, we're gonna make the background sky 600. Sure. 
so we can see our button there. And maybe let me zoom in a bit here. Okay, and let's also do the text is going to be black when it's light mode, and in dark mode, the text is going to be white. Okay, so now our button is there, but it's not doing anything. We haven't added the functionality to actually add and remove this dark class from our body. So that is where our use color mode hook is going to come into play. So let's call our use color mode hook, use color mode, and this hook is going to return to us those two things, first one being the color mode, second one being set color mode. On this button, we can add an on click function to call our set color mode function and change the value of our color mode. And we can create a callback function that is going to call set color mode, and all we need to do is pass the new value of the color mode that we want to store inside of our local storage. So what we can do is create a, another ternary operator here that is going to check is the color mode currently equal to light. If it is, we're going to want to pass in dark for the newly updated value. If it is not light, meaning that it's dark, we're going to pass in light. So now we have this button that should call this function. So let's see if this works. So currently we're in light mode. The um, dark class is not on the body. If I click toggle theme, we can see that it's actually working. So check this out. We're in light mode. If I click toggle theme, you can see that dark is being added to the body. There you go. And so now you can totally custom configure which styles you want applied in dark mode by just simply prepending all of those styles with this dark colon string here. And you can do that on any one of your HTML elements. All right, and so that is it guys. That is how easy it is to set up dark mode in your React applications using Tailwind. Let me know if there's any other Tailwind topics you'd like me to cover. I love Tailwind. I honestly can't really see myself using anything else um, to build out UIs nowadays. I'm currently working on some build tutorials that I'll be releasing over the next few weeks or months. Uh, that will be using Tailwind. So stay tuned for those, subscribe if you'd like to see those, and you'll get more practical examples of how to use Tailwind in an actual application. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.